What do you got there, Summer? A, a bottle full of milk. A and bottle? it's also very heavy. And what? So that I had to do it too. And what's the milk for? For the cow. We're going to go feed the cows this afternoon. It's a family family event. And we're going to find somewhere that's not windy. And we're going to talk about what we've learned since having the Jersey baby calves. We're about to go feed the cows. You coming, Joseph? Where's my boots? Yeah. Mimi's coming. Mimi's usually the one that actually looks after the cows more than anyone, to be honest. Even Violet's coming. Hey, Violet. <laughs> I'll uh, see you guys in the paddock. You know what they are, they're cows. Both of them. How you going, Gus? You ready for a feed, boy? What's going on, big fella? Yeah. He's like, oh, it's feeding time. Going on, Gus? Oh, not near the fence, man. That'll bite, remember? Yeah. So, what have we got to do this afternoon? So, we've got to feed Gus and feed Dolly. Um, thankfully, Gus has finished his scour medication, so just a milk bottle. Yep. So this afternoon, all we're going to do is feed him this bottle and the other bottle, right? And yep. This. So that one's Gus's. Yep. He's, he's sick. Stress. We're feeding him three times a day to keep his hydration up. And then Dolly gets a bit more. She only gets fed twice a day. Damn it, Roger. I'm going to go throw Roger in the dam here in a minute. If you don't shut up. What is loud? He's looking for his mate. That's his call. For his one right so is this one for Gus, is it? Yes. Alright, we'll leave this one here and we'll come back for it. You're going to have to hold up, Gus, we'll be back. We'll take our notes out because there's some notes we wrote down here of the stuff we learnt so far that we want to be able to share with everyone. Okay, remember all the fences are hot, guys, okay? So no touchy touchy. She's right. You're such a good helper, Summer. And you're. <laughs> In your pretty little princess dress. That's that fence. You got all that shelter underneath that thing. You decide you want to stand in the rain. It's been bucketing down, girl. Oh, She's super yeah. excited. Oh. <laughs> Dolly. Yeah, all right. See, it's Alrighty, so while we're feeding in here, and ho I'm hoping that the audio is not too bad, we'll talk about the things we learnt about the cows, right? So one was, don't go behind the cow. Who said that? I think, Joseph, you said that. Oh, yeah. So why did you say that? Why don't you go behind the cow? Because if you go behind the cow, then it's like not trained, and it's not trained. Yep. It will... Um, you could, it could, yeah, you could scare it a bit, right? Because yeah. you can sometimes if you walk behind the cow, they can't see that you're behind there, so they, they could a lot of things could go wrong, right? Not as bad as a horse, but still, yes. a lot of things could go wrong. So, the next thing was, um, don't put your face near the bottle, yeah, right? That was you, wasn't it? Because we learnt that, didn't we? Why, why, why don't you do that? Because if my teeth feel open and it hurts your tooth, like. Because that's happened to me before. Yeah, so, yeah. yep. So, if you want so, to maybe try. Like that, right? So, <laughs> you can see Dolly tries to sort of buck the, the bottle like that. And if if a little one is holding this bottle here and, and that corner clobbers your lip, it's going to hurt, right? Because it did. It yeah. Made it did make you cry a little bit, yeah. It was a little more of a shock than anything, but I reckon it would have would have hurt a fair bit because she's got a fair old buck about her. That's right. I'm trying to knock it behind the cat. Yeah, You're it's just gone. it's it's not. She's alright at the yeah. moment. Yeah, I think she that's that's not too bad, but it's just good practice, right? Not to walk behind a big animal like that because you don't no, they can't really see you, right? Another one was the milk needs to be warm. So Mimi's probably a good one to talk about this. So, Mimi. So when you're mixing the milk yep. to get it to actually combine really well with the water and you got to think about the milk that's coming out of a actual mama cow yeah it's got to be about 38 to 40 degrees yeah um which i know everyone's like oh but warm's warm it's not it makes a difference right. 
Yeah, so um, it can't be like room temperature warm, right? It's got to be like warm as if it's come out of your belly kind of warm. Yeah. yeah. So you do, like after the first couple of times you've made a bottle, you do get a rough idea of what the feel of 38 yeah. to 40 degrees of water is. Um, yeah. But for the first couple of times, I do recommend just using like a baby thermometer to check the temperature of the water. Yeah, or like one of those thermometers that you... A uh, meat that, thermometer. A meat yeah. thermometer. Yeah, that's the one. So next we've got, when you're done, get out of the pen. Yeah. Why would that be, Violet? You, this is a funny one for you. Why, why would you want to get out of the pen once you're done feeding them? Oh. Because... The cow will suck your fingers. Because what? The cow will suck your fingers. That's right. So, and some clothes. people don't like their fingers sucked, especially people with long fingernails. Hey, Violet, show those nails off. <laughs> <laughs> show them off. Go on, show me the nails. They're actually really pretty looking. Yeah, wow. Hey. And they're, they're professionally done now, right? So, but yeah, and you never know. You put those fingers in Dolly's mouth, I reckon she'll suck the nails off. But, yeah, but yeah, if it's a bit gross. Once they've finished their bottle, they're, um, there's a lot of foamy stuff in there. And, pretty crazy so and they are they're looking for more milk yep. so cows don't realize when they're not hungry yeah so so as you can see there's something in here <laughs> right Megan's pregnant and he can move around and the other day there was an incident right when we were in there yeah. and he, we had to give him an injection and it was all a little bit too much but long story short he nudged in just below Megan's yeah, tummy just in my and bone. yeah and it could have been a lot worse it, it wasn't bad like it hurt right yeah it really did hurt because yeah. he, he is a pre he's pretty rough tears to me eyes. yeah <laughs> yeah he didn't mean it right it's not him no. being aggressive or anything it's just he's, he's just really hungry yeah so how many times does Gus get fed a day at the moment because he's had scours you got to make sure they're hydrated you've got to feed him about three times mm -hmm. a day yeah so we've split his feed up into two litre increments because yep. he gets six litres a day. Yep. Dolly only gets fed twice a day. Although Dolly should be weaned. <laughs> yep. She's definitely getting close to being weaned. Where were we? What were we up to last at, over at the Dolly's pen over there? Do your research uh, powders. On, on your formula. Yep. Yep. So this is probably another one you could talk about. When you're choosing your breed of cow, if you're going to grow for a dairy cow, um, I would suggest finding a milk feed that has probiotics in it because dairy cows are very fragile. Yeah. When you say fragile, what do you mean? They just more tend they've got they a have a tendency to, to in... get sick more. Sorry? They have a tendency to get sick more. Right. Um, your beef cattle are more hardy. Yeah. Okay, so you got to do your research on your formula. So signs of scours, your main one is runny poos. Yeah. The other sign is droopy eyes or ears and then if you do a pinch test yeah the skin will stay up so it'll make a tent <laughs> um because they're going to be obviously if you have diarrhea which is what scours is you're going to have your dehydration so those are the main points to look for yeah um, okay this was one so be prepared for vet bills we are first time cow owners yep. obviously i mean I, my aunt does have beef cattle. Um, she runs a beef cattle operation, but you can never be prepared for sickness. So um, definitely make sure that that's in your budget because yes. it can happen. It might yeah. not happen, but it can. So it's better to be prepared rather than be surprised by that bill. Probably so more so to make an uneducated guess. Okay. I would be say, if you've got enough money to buy a cow, put an extra two and a half grand away for a rainy day on top of the cow. Like we haven't spent two and a half grand on these cows yet, but it wouldn't be, I would be expecting to pay that by the time they're full grown before they produce any kind of sort of uh, positive thing for the farm, I guess, other than pats. Um, yeah, it's, it'll be a long time before Dolly puts any milk out or put, gives us a calf and it'll be a long time before Gus has to do his job. Yeah. So, Yep, so what what's that summer? And it also and it might and it might be a while until the horns get fully grown on the bull and also if the if the poo is green it's not really 
that good. It it should be it should be brown. Should be brown. And what color should the wee be? Clear. It should be clear. That's right. So that's that's a couple of things to look out for too. The the stool of the animal, what what consistency and what uh, color it should be, and there's a lot of things to take into consideration when you're getting a new cow, but one big thing to take into consideration is the change of environment. I think the change of environment and the stress that can be put on an animal moving from farm to farm, depending on whether it's gotta be a 10 minute drive or a two hour drive, there's a lot of things to take into consideration, but I think the change of environment, maybe even a change of the feed, change of the different grass that they're eating. I mean, you can't help when your cow is sick, but try and be, Just, you know, contact. If you, if you need a vet, call the vet. Yeah. Don't wait because the, the time that you spend waiting, thinking you should have called the vet, you should have already called the vet and the vet could have been there. And that could, that could either be, sometimes it could be the matter of life and death. Ugh. No, that's all right, we'll, we'll wrap it up here. I We're having a tea break while this rains here. Yeah, I'm hoping you might even be able to hear me, but you're probably not going to be able to. Now you might be able to. But it's just so much rain. This camera doesn't even do it justice how much it's raining at the moment. Paddock down there is flooded. Yeah. Too wet out there, eh, Gus? All right, so we're just wrapping it up here. Uh, we just thought we'd share a few things that we've learned since we've got these baby cows. I hope you got some information out of this video. If you did, give us a thumbs up. And if you found any of the information useful, be sure to share it with a, with a friend and uh, leave us a comment if you know any other sort of useful information that people might be able to use in their calf raising journey. Until the next one, I'm Danny, this is Megan. This is the Young Family Homestead, and we'll catch you in the next one. See ya. Bye. 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 <laughs> and three kids.